Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Moltrap coming at you with a mount and blade commentary. Mount and blade, two words, not mountain or well, two. Well, of course, it's two words, but mount and blade. I guess it's two words and an ampersand, three words, sort of. Never mind. Point being, it's not mountain blade, which I thought it was the first time someone told me about that. This is a game that I've been spending a ton of time on lately, so I thought I'd do um, a little bit of a video about it to give you guys, uh, let you guys know what I've been up to, and also kind of share a cool game with y'alls that I've been playing a lot of lately. And there's the triumphant music in the background finishing up. Um, I played this game uh, a couple years ago, I think, and... Um, uh, I liked it a lot. It, it's by the way, before I get started, this is a time sync game. So if you're at all going to become interested in it, um, keep that in mind. And also, just keep in mind that this is actually the older version. They've since come out with Mountain Blade Warbrand, which is kind of an expansion, standalone expansion, which uh, I actually haven't played yet. I'm planning on playing it. I have it purchased on Steam. Actually, a friend of mine got it for me. Um, <clears throat> But uh, I haven't played it yet, and it's supposed to be better. So, but bef I decided to play a little bit of the original before going on to the expansion, and uh, wanted to kind of take over the world one more time before doing it in the new style. Um, anyway, so I just kind of wanted to show you guys some basics about this video, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by kind of showing you the game and what it's like and the basics of how it works and then in the second part of the video I'm gonna go into some basic strategies and stuff since I played a lot of it so there's some stuff that kinda of takes some time to figure out for yourself and so I'll give you some insight on um, how to to play well I guess if you guys decide to do decide to play anyway I just wanted to show how cool of a game this is it is there's a couple there's a few different view modes in this game this is the world view you can zoom in and out of you can zoom in very very close if you wanna you know look at what's going on look at the trees and all that um, <clears throat> you can zoom in very close or you can zoom all the way out to the giant world view it's a very very large extensive map lots of different uh, cities and towns the ones in the big with the big names are the cities um, or the towns I guess the cat and then there's castles and then there's uh, villages as well and you can do different things at each of those three or three different kinds of uh, locations and uh, anyway so it's pretty cool you, you move around on this map as a party and uh, you can you have troops and stuff so you, we notice here if I hold over mine I've got a bunch of heroes listed and then I have um, <clears throat> some troops listed as well and so those are my different troops and you get those troops in various ways so you move around as a party and run around this little map and uh, so that's kinda one way that you see the world and uh, another way we're gonna find out in just a moment is the battle mode and that is really what makes this game exciting um, is the big battles. Whoop, my mouse actually screwed up, but that's okay. We'll just watch me zoom it in. And we're actually gonna let's see, this guy's chasing these looters as well. So why don't we do this? Let's go attack this army instead. Let's see if he can get away from me right now. And yeah, he's gonna try and run because he knows I have a whoa, actually there's two armies. Nope, I can take both of them on. Never mind. Uh let's see if I can catch him before he gets somewhere safe. Um anyway, whoa, okay, so random major battles going on in the middle here. Oh, I can't participate in any of those though. Where'd he go? There he is. I've captured you! I lost track of him. Um, so let's go after these force bandits instead so I can show you the battle mode. Anyway, very very cool game and notice actually I'm going through these trees right now. Those actually affect the location of the battle when it actually gets to it. And notice I'm actually going slower in these trees because I'm in cavalry and then once I get to the open plains I'm actually going to go a little faster and now I'll be able to catch up to the forest bandits who are actually slower um, out in the open so anyway you guys are going to in just a moment once I catch these bandits you're going to see the battle mode of the game which is really really cool uh, and is you know part of the reason why this game is so fun oh come on get him before he gets back yes um, so because I have a cavalry based army for instance I'm actually going to try and fight out in the open where it's easier for my cavalry to uh, to do things. Um, anyway, this is how you do a lot of your all your interactions with other characters is kind of choose between these things. Um, all right, so prepare to die. Your luck has run out, wretch. I have 86 troops against their 16. They stand no chance. But what I'm actually going to do? Another cool part about this 
game is this. You can actually command your troops to do things. So you can see I have a lot of really, really heavy cavalry, actually. And actually, I've only had a couple pl uh, player uh, troops that are infantry right now. But you can tell them to do different things as well. So I can tell my cavalry to hold this position. And I can tell my infantry to charge at the enemy, for instance. And now you can see that my very few infantry troops are actually going to charge towards the enemy while my cavalry stays behind. And I said, okay, actually, let's see, cavalry are going to be better against these guys, so I'm going to have my infantry stay here, and they're going to stop and hold that position. And then um, <clears throat> my cavalry, I'll tell them to follow me, and they will follow me into battle. And this is, of course, the coolest part about the game, charging into battle and slaughtering the armies of your enemies. Except that guy just blocked my shot. Here we come on. Need to get a good strike off and die. There we go. That this is the fun part about the game is charging into battle. Actually, I mean, there's different styles of play, but uh, you can see you can run by, and then my troops come in, and they're gonna start battling as well. And just huge, huge battles. Sorry about the FPS lag, but huge battles with up to a hundred units on the field at once are what makes this game awesome. Um, if you have a crappy older computer like I used to when I first started playing this game, then um, what are you guys doing? Did I tell you to charge or what? Go ahead, charge. Kill him. Where's the last guy? There he is. Go get him. Finally. Um, anyway, it's really cool to see two armies clashing against each other, especially if you have like two large armies and infantry, and you can you know, tell your archers to stand on top of the hill, and you can tell your infantry to protect them by standing in front of them, that kind of thing. And of course, after the battle come the spoils. If uh, there had been any prisoners that they had, I could rescue them and t take them into my army if I wanted to hire them. And uh, there's also prisoners. I can take prisoners if I want to, and I can um, ransom them off. Or um, sometimes different quests require you to have prisoners. And then I have my troops over here as well, which after the battle, they got experience, and I can actually upgrade them to better troops uh, once they've gotten some experience as well. So that's what I'm going to do over here. So that is pretty much... Uh, the main, and then you get uh, spoils of war as well. You can pick things up, and depending on, you know, I just battled some some bandits, so they don't have very good go loot, but if you battle a big army, if you battle the king's army, for instance, sometimes you can actually get some really high level um, armor out of the loot and that kind of thing, and usually you get some a little bit of money as part of your loot as well. So that is pretty much Mount and Blade. Uh, in a nutshell, I'm going to show you a couple more things over here. We'll go over to Pravin, one of the towns, and show you a few more things that you're going to find in this game. Um, just kind of the, the the other ways you can interact. So there's the world view where you're running around, and then there's the battle view where you're doing that. And then there's also these uh, towns and things where you're going to get these choices to do various things. So you can go to the tavern, for instance, and talk to people. This is a farmer who's probably going to tell me that his village has is infested with bandits, that I have to go kill them, and I'll say, sure, I'll help you kill the bandits. Might as well, and that's how you get quests. And then you can go to your quest menu and look at the various quests that you have uh, in the pipe. And so that's basically why this game is super, super, super addictive. Is because you can just take on different quests, and you can work on this one and get that one. And if you somehow run out of quests, you can always just get another one by talking to lords. And uh, it's pretty cool stuff. And so anyway, in the taverns is where you can. Um, do various things. You can uh, you can hire guards if you want to hire extra troops. They're more expensive in the long run, but if you need quick quick troops, then you can do that. Um, and you can also find other heroes as well. Now, I'm going to talk to this tavern keeper for just a moment. One thing you can do is you can buy everyone in here a jar of your best wine, and it says, you know, let everyone know the generosity of Mole Trap. Well. Uh, if I did that, what it would basically do is it says it increases... Well, I'll do it real quick. i got some money to spare on this character. Um, it says your relation with Praven has improved. Um, so what that does is when I go here, it says Populous is indifferent. My my uh, relation is 2. And if they hate you, then it's negatives or something like that. And that just can affect you know different things. You can get better missions from people and stuff like that. You have a relation with everything and everyone in the game. Well, all the uh, important ones, at least. So, for instance, I'm going to talk to this character. Let's see. Uh, who is he? Lord Rockabarth. And so I can hover over him. He has no relation. I haven't done anything for him. If I do quests for him, 
um, or if I fight alongside him in battle, so you see I can do a quest for him, then his relation will go up. And if I actually in this one, I think if I yeah, see if I tell him actually I don't want to do that for you, my relation goes down with him. Um, <clears throat> but it's all a matter of uh, weighing things because you also have relations with different towns. And he wanted me to go force the money out of the populace of his town, and I said no because I actually want to have good relations with the towns because then you can recruit more volunteers and get an army faster if you have um, if you have better troops uh, or if you have a better relation with the towns you can get more troops. And so it's kind of a really interesting um, dynamic where you have the different lords. Uh, and you have your relations with each of the lords. Yep, Got to pay my troops. And you have the relation with different towns and that kind of thing. And sometimes if you defeat the lords in battle, then their their castles will have bad relations with you, um, etc. And the towns and that kind of thing. And there's all kinds of different ways that you can get tasks. You can get tasks from the lords. Apparently, I've already got a task from him, so he can't give me any new tasks. Um, you can go into the taverns and sometimes get tasks from people in taverns. You can walk around the streets of the city uh, and get um, tasks, quests from uh, quests from the uh, the guild master of the town or something like that. Um, you can get sometimes uh, quests from the village elders in the different little town. Uh, uh, let's go to this one for instance in the villages. You can go to the village elder and ask him for quests as well. Um, so yeah, there's all kinds of different ways you can get quests, and you know you can basically play any style you want to, which is really cool. You can play just a sheer battle style, and you can just you know pump up your character's battle stats, and uh, and just play a, a hardcore battle character, or you can actually play a very a more of a um, infrastructure type character, and you can. Uh, pump up your trading skills and do really good at trading. So there's different ways of doing things. So for instance, you can make money by doing quests for lords, and you can make money by hunting down looters and taking their gear and selling that. Or you know, if you want to play it differently, you can actually, uh, you know, you can just go and buy goods. Spice is very cheap in the Karagat Connet and with a purple area. You can buy spice there and run it all the way up to the north where the uh, yellow is and. Uh, sell it there for a lot of profit and you know you can actually be relatively peaceful of course the battle's the fun part so it's pretty good to to do some kind of battle quests um, yeah and then uh, what I've actually done for this character is uh, let's see where is he there he is is you can see my flag I've got my double axis waving because I fight with a big axe so I just said double axis would be probably a good good uh, flag for me I've actually joined as a um, as a lord for the Nords, the Kingdom of Nords. So you can actually do that too. You can actually swear fealty, and you can fight as a mercenary if, if you don't want to go all the way and swear fealty, or you can actually swear fealty to uh, one of the kingdoms and then fight in the wars for that kingdom and that kind of stuff. So it's a really really cool dynamic world, and it's just so much fun. And like I said, super super addictive because you can get multiple quests going on at once and. Uh, you know different things you have to do for each of the quests and um, yeah it's just lots and lots of fun so um, anyway uh, that's pretty much uh, what the uh, world of Mountain Blade is like and uh, I'm go gonna go ahead and uh, just move on from there now that you have kind of a taste of it and how it works and um, uh, show you guys kind of a, the basics of how to get started some basic strategies so if you actually do want to play the game and you have never played it before some things to think about when you're creating a new character alright time for some killing some bandits